Welcome back to 201 Walkthroughs. My name is Luke Hosh, and today I want to go through an example of a TC201. Um, so whether you've started the PSET or whether you're done with your simulator, I think that walking through this example will help you kind of understand conceptually what we're doing here. Um, what I want this TC201 to do is read in a number, output that number plus two, read in another number, and then kind of do a conditional thing where if that second number is positive, we're going to output it, and otherwise we're going to output the first number. So we need to be able to like store numbers, do conditionals, you know, have, have a way of checking some input, and then at the end we're just going to halt. So I think it's best to walk through this with a sort of uh, an example. Um, my code is over here. This is what your code might look like in Racket, um, but we'll just kind of walk through it with an example. Uh, to do this, we have to understand a little bit what a TC201 is made of. It's made up of a RAM and a CPU. So the RAM will end up being comprised of these things here. These get assembled into the RAM. Um, and you'll write a, pro, you know, a function to assemble them, but don't worry too much about it right now. The CPU is comprised of the ACC the accumulator, the program counter, the run flag, and the arithmetic error bit, the AEB. Uh, right now, we're just really gonna think about um, the ACC and the PC, uh, the accumulator and the program counter. The accumulator, you can sort of think of as, I don't know, like a working desk, like where you keep stuff that you're going to work with right now. Uh, the PC, the program counter, I like to think of as, um, a sort of like a pointer to which instruction we're at. So program counters start at zero, and I think the accumulator also just starts at zero. Um, these would be in, in binary, so the accumulator is, is actually 16 bits. 16 bits, yeah, 16 bits. 16 digits, I'll just say. Be careful. Um, so this would be actually you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 16 times. Um, but I'm just going to write it in, in decimal. Uh, the program counter, I think it's 12 digits. But again, I'm just going to use the decimal representations because it's easier here. Um, so when I start my program counter zero, my accumulator is zero, I think the run flag is probably one, A AEB is zero, but um, ignore those right now. This is kind of to check if you're done and this is to check if you have some math problems, but we don't right now. So I start by reading input from the user. Um, because or maybe something good to do here would be to, to understand that when we assemble, we number each of these. Kind of, these get put in order and we can access them by their number. So the program counter at zero means we're doing the zeroth instruction, which reads input from the user. When I read that input, let's say I pass it the number three, that will make our accumulator three, and our program counter will move up one, two, one. Now we're at instruction one, we're going to store in numstore. Uh, so store is an instruction that takes an address. Here numstore will eventually be turned to basically 14, because I have numstore down here as a label for this instruction. It'll take my three and it'll put it down here so that this becomes a three. Okay, my program counter moves to two. And I do the second instruction, add two. So again, add takes an address. Here, two actually means the 13th, uh, the 13th part of the RAM, again, indexed at zero. So here I have in data, I have the number two. So it'll add two to the accumulator. Uh, so instead of five now, or sorry, instead of three, now we'll have the number five here. Because again, I'll say it one more time, we added from the address to, this is where that locates to, and in here I have the number two. So it'll load this number, and it'll add it into the accumulator, which we had three in before, making it now five, and our program counter moves to three. Okay, at three, we output the number that's in the accumulator, so we'll output the number five. That's this step here, output our number plus two. You can say read in the number that was three, I'll put the number five, 
our program counter will move up to four, and our accumulator won't change because all we did was output. Now we want to read input again. So say now let's say we give it the number, I don't know, the number 10. Okay? So we read the input number 10. That'll change our accumulator to 10. And again, our program counter just kind of default increases by one. So this becomes five now. Instruction five says skip skip O's or skip positive. So it'll check in our accumulator. Is the value in our accumulator positive? And if so, this says basically if pause PC plus two. So increase the program counter by two. Uh, instead of by one as we normally would. So 10 is positive. Instead of the PC going to six, the PC is going to go to seven. So notice, I'll say really quickly, if it did only increase by one, if my input number was negative, it would go to instruction six, which jumps somewhere else. Basically says, uh, you know, instead of, instead of doing this chunk of code here, I want you to do the chunk of code that follows down here. So I can say if positive PC plus two, which kind of uh, moves me down here. And if it's only PC plus one, it'll jump to another section of code. This is how we kind of do conditionals with PC 201s. So my input was positive. I skipped this instruction and I went to output zero. So here I'm going to output the number 10. So we read in the number 10, 10 is positive. So we're outputting the number 10 um, and then my program counter uh, will increase to eight. That will tell me to halt and I'll, I'll finish. I think my RF will move to zero. I should probably check that. Uh, well, uh, if I get the RF wrong, I apologize. But basically my RF will change. That'll say that I should halt. Um, if my second number was, was kind of reversed a little bit, let's say that I was at four and I gave it the number negative six. Then, so my PC was at four. I read in negative six. My PC would go to five. I would skip if positive, it's not positive, so I would go to six, leaving my accumulator alone. Six would say jump to option one which basically says make the PC that new address. So my PC would become nine because that's where option one is, uh, where I would load numstore. So load the data that's in the location numstore, which is currently three. Load the number three into the accumulator. And my program counter increases by one to 10. I output zero, so here I output the number three. Oops. Uh, and then my program counter increases to 11, where I halt. All right. Um, I hope this gave you some understanding of how a TC201 works. I actually realize now that this was completely useless, but. Um, gave you some idea of how assembly works, how we kind of can refer to other locations by their addresses, and how we can do conditional statements, all these kind of funky ideas, what the purpose of the CPU versus the RAM is. Um, yeah, I hope this helped.